Hello folks and welcome, my name is Colin, call sign MM0 OPX and I want to talk to you about NFED half-wave antennas again and specifically uh, I want to talk to you about this ferrite core here, made of 43 material and why I think that this makes the best uh, uh, transformer for 100 watts that you, you can actually make or buy because there is a couple of people actually selling NFED half-wave transformers with this, uh, with this core now this core specifically, it doesn't have a, a general name, but the fair right part number is 2643251100022. It measures 39.1 millimetres by 16.75 by 22.2 wide. Um, and actually before we talk about this, I just want to do a little recap um, uh, on some other cores. More commonly, when we talk about NFED half-wave transformers, most people are either using this, which is the FT140-43 or it's big brother, this is the FT240-43, 43 being the uh, material type. Now, these are actually very forgiving cores, as I've actually found out, so if you're a beginner into radio and you want to make your own antenna, then these are actually a good shout because you can do a little wrong with these uh, in terms of actually building an antenna and it, it and it's great experience but i think there's a lot of myths going about these cores here and maybe perhaps how good they actually are and um, hence why i'm talking about this core because i think this core is better than both of these um so in order to make a, a an nfed half-wave transformer a 49 to 1 56 to 1 64 to 1 it, it doesn't matter you need to achieve that by you know different windings and you can do that in different ways you could have two primary uh, two primary uh, and uh, 14 secondary or you could have three primary and 21 secondary so there's a lots of different ways you can wind them to achieve the 40 um 49 to 1 ratio which is the most common or you could do the same for 64 to 1 now, this is a little um, Excel spreadsheet and I'll put a link to this down in the description. Um, if you watched my first video, first real video on NFED half waves, these are basically back-to-back um, -back comparisons where you use two, two of these uh, cores, you basically identical, you wrap them however you're going to make the antenna and you put them through a nano v &A and you give you some losses. So this is one of the... Um, accepted ways of checking losses of your uh, transformer but there is another way doing it with a single transformer and a resistor I've not done it that way yet but just for continuity I'm doing it this way for now so all my um, all my results are you know they're all relative to each other so if you look at here um, so this is a FD140-43 and this is all the bands so 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 and on every one of those you're getting over 30% loss with the 140-43. Now, if you do, if you if you start to tweak the windings, you make them, this is basically your standard winding. If you put close wound, it starts to get a bit better and it's getting reasonable. It's getting up to 81% on 10 meters. Um, you go on and go on. But to make this, you can actually make this really efficient on 80 metres and 40 metres. You can see this is a 28, 28 turns and 4, 28 turns secondary, 4 turns primary, and it makes it uh, nearly 88% and 86% uh, efficient on 80 and 40 respectively. But you can see by the time it gets up to uh, 10 metres, uh, you're losing 80% of your power in the core. And this is the thing with NFED half waves. You want to use a transformer uh, that is going to give you broadband coverage because you want all the bands to work and you want an efficient antenna on all bands. So this is why typically we use this because it's it's pretty linear. You can see it's pretty even, but you're still getting around about 30% loss with the standard uh, 49 to 1 winding on the, the 140-43. If we then look at the 240-43, this is actually a little bit better. So if we look at, you know, the standard 14.2 um, winding, or 2.14, however you want to look at it, you could see here that 80 metres were 75% efficient, 78%, 81, 82 and 78. So we're losing, we're about, you know, we're, we're, we're almost 10% better using the 240.43 as opposed to the 140.43. So that's 
it is reasonable. So it's not a bad antenna, antenna at that. And then when you look at, this is actually another experiment I did with a three stack of um, 240-43s, but this is for running higher power. You can see it's good on the lower bands, but you can see it falls off a cliff. Um, nearly 35% losses on 10 metres, but I'm digressing here. Now, when you have more losses with these cores, that generates more heat, um, and therefore you can't put as much power into these. Now, I've done some power tests, and when I'm saying that this is rated at 100 watts, I'm rating that 100 watts digital, so continual FT8 or FT4 use. I've done this experiment and I'll put a link to a video down in the description for that. So looking at the 140-43, you're looking at around about 25-30 watts digital that this is rated at. For the 240-43, you're looking at around about 70 watts, 75 watts, maybe 80 um, before it actually uh, hits the, the, the curry point, curry point, heats up too much and becomes useless. I know some people might argue with that if you're only using it for occasional digi modes perhaps CW, you might get away with it. But I've tested this core out here and I've run it for four hours continuously on 20 metres on FT4 during the contest and it didn't falter. It did get warm, uh, I won't lie, but it didn't falter where these would, these would both fail. Now, if we look at the spreadsheet here, and we want to have a look at how good it is and you can see that I've actually done a lot of testing here. And I'll actually just cut straight to the chase. The 56 to 1 is the one that we want to go with. Um, and that's because that's what makes the antenna. And what I mean by that is you could actually go with a, a 14 2 um, or a 2 14 uh, close. Sorry, this is wide spade with a wide space, wide space with crossover. And, you know, there's nothing less than um, nearly. Actually, we're actually over 85, so it's at least 85% efficient in all bands. And you don't get that with either, either of these. So right away, this core is just much more efficient. So testing efficiency is one thing, but when you want to actually make it into an antenna, you won't always get that low SWR. And that's why I actually had to go with the 15.2. I could not get the 14.2 to work at all. Um, my SWR on 40 metres was just too high it was over 2 to 1 wasn't, it was probably usable but it just wasn't good enough so we ended up I, or I ended up saying you know asking lots of people for advice and they say add, add an extra turn onto the secondary that's what I did and it becomes a 56 point something to 1 and it becomes an extremely efficient transformer you know look at it 80 8 to 9.95 90% efficient 8 to 9.74 and 40 87.7 on 20, 87.3 on 15, and 85.9 on 10. So this is extremely broadbanded, and it's going to give you a great performance antenna um, across these bands. Now, again, the, the purpose of this video is really just to, you know, just to showcase this core, and you know, get more people to use this, as opposed to the the, the 240-43. Most of us don't have linears, so. 100 watts max is all we're ever going to use um, on digital. So why go for this when you could go for one of these? And these are actually cheaper than this. Um, the only sources I've found for these is either DigiKey or Mauser, um, but very easily found on both those websites if you just put in that plug, that um, part number again, 2643-251-1002, and that will take you uh, to this core. But you actually then need to make this into an antenna, and that's what I have done. And that's what I have here. Um, so I've used a nice, I can't remember the exact name, I think it's an RP044, something is the case. can't remember exactly, but it's a bit more expensive than other cases here. And I've actually made a mounting board underneath here. If I was going to make this mounting, cord, mounting board, it'd be a bit different, so I actually got... GLPCB, I designed it up, so I've actually got this mounting board here, and it's really, really strong. So what I've done is, I designed this up in CAD, so we can actually mount our transformer like this, and you can see that we've got our holes here, so we could use cable ties, we've got these four holes here, 
So we can attach this then into the box. When the box comes, it comes with these four screws, which is absolutely great. And it makes a nice um, secure end fed half wave. Nothing at all uh, uh, fancy to this. So two turns primary, 15 uh, secondary total. So which that gives us our 56 to one. Got a, a 3 kV um, a capacitor in here. I always use TDKs. Um, this is the part number CC45SL3FD101JYNNA. Uh, and these are the ones with the short legs. But don't use cheap unknown capacitors. Get the TDKs or something that, that you know it, it is good. And this is actually you know, makes a very good end-fed half-wave transformer. And this is what I'm actually using uh, at the minute. Again, if I was going to make this board, I'd actually put cutouts here. Because it just makes it easier to mount. Using all stainless steel hardware, as usual. SO239s, um, gold-plated terminals. A stainless steel um, uh, eye bolt for mounting. So this is ideal if you want to put something up uh, permanently. Um, you can get a you can get a mounting plate, so you could use clamps of some sort. You know you've got lots of options, but I'm really want to encourage you to make your own end fed half wave uh, transformer and and an efficient one at that. So really, I want you to use this core over the two forty forty three. Getting into stacking these that's a little bit different and I'm still working at that. I do have a couple of stacks here that I've been testing. So I've tested the three and I need to test the two stack. So I've actually been loaned these and I really need to get them back to their owner. Um, um, because I've just, just been borrowed them, very kindly been sent them. Um, commercially, where can you buy this? Well, when I was developing this, I was actually putting some posts onto Facebook and um, Danny from My Antennas, he actually popped up because he actually uses this core. So he uses, I believe the, the, the model number is, I think it's the MEF130. Um, I'll put a link down in the description. So you can actually buy this off the shelf from Danny at My Antennas. So you don't have to make it if, if you're not a builder. And he's been making this for such a, he's been making this for quite a long time. He rates it to 250 watts SSB and 100 watts digital modes. And I would, you know, I would concur with that. Um, a slightly cheaper option, Adam, K6ARK, he's actually recently started using this core, which is excellent to see, you know, his little, um, you know, if you've been on YouTube, you know who Adam is and you know he's in fed half-wave antennas, so he's now using this, so you can buy his kit, he sells it on Amazon, if I can find a link, I'll put that in the description as well, so if you're doing um, kind of lightweight, temporary field operations, go with Adam's option, if you're looking for something that's... Um, permanent or you're going to set up for a few weeks whatever then go with the my antennas version but of course you know build your own um it's exactly the same principle there's um instructions galore uh, on youtube how to make your your end fed half wave but you can do better in these um you know so you know i can't sing praises highly enough of this and i just hope more people are going to start using this core so anyway, so that's it. Uh, that's it for me. Um, I hope you found that interesting. Um, I've got some other NFED half wave uh, videos planned. And um, this is going to be a half square for um, an NFED half square for actually for forty meters upwards. <coughs> um, and I'm actually going to use the adjust the wave principle and put stainless steel wire on here. But that's that's again that's a different video. We're not talking about that just now, but it is using this transformer in here. So there we are, folks. I want to wish you all the best. Um, it's almost um, 2023 here, so happy new year, wherever you are in the world. And hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.